Hello there. This is a video about two things, about the A10 Mini video switcher from Blackmagic Design. And well, it's a video about remote, online, however you want to call it, teaching. Something that we have to do much more now uh, in these times of COVID-19 or coronavirus or however you want to call it. So um, I have my ATEM Mini here and uh, well, I put an additional camera above me to show you what my setup here is. And I want to walk you through the whole thing. And I'm also uh, recording this live. It's not a live stream, but it's a live recording. However, um, you know, English is not my mother tongue. I'll make a lot of mistakes, probably have to do re-recording. So I still have a chance to edit a few things out um, if it's well too terrible. However, this is my setup here. Now, the ATEM Mini. I originally did not intend to use it for remote teaching. Um, I originally got it because I wanted to do two things. One is live streams of smaller concerts. Uh, I do a lot of classical music recordings. And also to do some live reviews because, as you might know, that, well, I haven't done a lot of reviews lately, even though there are a couple of things I'd like to review, like, you know, the ATEM Mini here or a couple of lenses that I have. But it's a time-consuming process, really. And, um, well, it's not that I have a lot of time. Um, well, I wanted to speed up the process of doing reviews. Let's get back to this aerial view here. So what is the setup? Now, the core piece, of course, is the ATEM Mini Video Switcher. I guess there are already quite a lot of uh, reviews about this machine here. I won't do that now. It's a four channel video switcher, which also has the possibility to bring in stills images. It can do a picture in picture, as you see here. It has uh, transitions, some of them being uh, quite uh, ridiculous, a uh, bit, you know, Star Wars uh, feel. <laughs> Uh, but most of all, it's a very solid switcher that brings in four cameras or, in general, HDMI inputs. Yeah. This is the centerpiece of everything here. Then I have uh, the cameras. Well, let me take myself out of the picture here. My main camera is, the, in this case, the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Cam 4K, and it takes these pictures. By the way, I use these transitions here. Usually I would just have a, a hard cut, but I think for this sort of review or whatever it is, it might be interesting that you can, while the transition is underway, see what I'm actually doing. That's why I'm doing that here. So let's go back to this view here. Then my second camera that I usually go with when I'm teaching is this one here. This is this camera here. It's a simple camcorder attached to a magic arm and a light stand. And, uh, well, this gives me the possibility to write down a few things. Of course, at the same time, picture in picture, I can talk to the students and tell them what I'm doing here. Something like that, for example. So these are the two cameras that I usually go with when I'm teaching. Currently, now I have this camera here as well. That's because I want to show you how my setup is. Now, there is one more channel, HDMI channel, uh, I'm using as the channel four, and this is this laptop here. This laptop brings in additional media, like for example, the exercises they gave the kids, you know, when I want to go through them, or some kind of videos like here in your Fermilab, I can even bring in sound. That comes in pretty handy. Uh, also, it gives me the chance to react spontaneously on questions. Now, I do live streams. I do live streams currently with YouTube. So the kids have the chance, if they are uh, signed in with a YouTube or Google account, to ask questions online live. For that, I usually simply have my iPhone here, and well, this is a recorded live stream here. I have all the questions here, and uh, so it makes it easy to react on that because it is uh, pretty much where I look at 
when I'm looking at the camera, it's just down here, so it's easier to see. It's a bit easier than looking at the main screen here. Now, the main computer, an iMac, and um, as you see, I have OBS running here. Currently, I'm recording, it's not a live streamer. Then there is the YouTube page here, and also down here, I have the ATEM software control with a couple of steels here that I can choose and things like that. I don't want to talk about the ATEM Mini too much because, um, well, have a look at, at other places. Uh, yeah, I wanted to do a review, but you know, I'm too busy to do that. Now, the only additional thing, so perhaps I could mention that now, uh, that I um, haven't talked about yet, well, it's um, an LED panel that I have over there. Uh, which doesn't, um, which only partly faces me, it mostly faces the wall there, which is a white wall and reflects uh, the light to me uh, so that it is a little bit softer. I have a backlight which is over there. You can't see it, and in, 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 of course, you can't see it. Uh, and uh, I have another, well, accent light which is currently red, which is right behind me. So to give a little bit well, sort of atmosphere uh, to the scenery. One more thing is the audio. Well, as you know, I do classical music recordings quite a lot. So I'm usually working with, well, pretty high quality sound recordings. You know, audio recordings should be really good when I'm recording an organ or a, a string quartet or whatever, or a piano. But these microphones that I use are not perfect. Now, I'm here in my sort of improvised studio, which is not designed as a studio at all. It's my, my little study, my little office where I usually edit only. Um, and it, it is not at all acoustically treated. It sounds horrible if I have a, a nice condenser mic here, a large diaphragm condenser or whatever. So what I have here is a pretty cheap um, dynamic microphone. I think it's from Behringer. It's just definitely the steep, the cheapest microphone I've um, ever owned, probably. But it does the job. And a dynamic mic it does not necessarily narrow the beam, but it is not so sensitive. So you have to be relatively close to be heard. And that also means that the, the reverb, the echo of this room, which comes from a little bit farther away from the walls behind me, in front of me, and whatever, do not penetrate the microphone so much. So this microphone on a simple stand here goes directly into, let me take myself away here, into the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Cam 4K. As you might see here, I have an adapter. This is a regular XLR connector to this uh, mini XLR connector that goes into the BMP CC 4K. And uh, the reason I do that is mostly because I don't want to run into any, you know, sync issues. The cameras come in with HDMI. HDMI always has a, a lag, a delay, uh, depending on the combination of hardware, the cables, whatever. It can be very different. So it is the easiest to bring it in right into your camera, your main camera, where you will be seen while talking. Uh, because, you know, no sync issues then. I still had some sync issues, but that was mostly uh, an issue between OBS and uh, YouTube. Uh, I think you know, I, I just chose the, the, the wrong audio buffer or something, but I've, I was able to, uh, to resolve that. So this is the basic setup. Now, why did I choose this setup here? Now, the main reason is I can get into the process of teaching much better than I can if I only have one camera and perhaps just bring in some additional files. Especially this camera here helps a lot because here the kids can see what I'm doing. They see the process of the teaching. I'm pretty convinced that this really makes teaching, teaching. So it's not a show, it's not a presentation, it's really teaching. I can also bring in a book for it, you know, see what I have here, uh, refer to a certain page here. It's uh, pretty close 
to what I do in regular classes when everybody's in the classroom and I'm as well. So the ATA Mini is a great piece for that. Again, you can do a lot of that with OBS only. I actually uh, did a video about that. It's in German, so probably not accessible to everybody. Uh, I'll try to show that a lot is possible as well, but it is not as convenient as it is with this machine here. And there are certain things you can't do with OBS only, or it uh, is at least very difficult. And, you know, trying to find the right spot with your mouse, well, why do you have to go and things like that? That's one thing. It's much easier to just switch a button here and you always hit the right one. You know, it's one, two, three, four, just on your fingers, no problem at all. Now, unfortunately, I can't say, teachers, you know, get the A to Mini. Apart from the fact that it costs some money, well, it's pretty, it's really a bargain for what it can do. But apart from that, it's very difficult still to get one. I was lucky to get one, I think three months ago or something, uh, but still it's very difficult to get it. You know, if you order it now, you you will probably be lucky to get it in, well, during the, well in, in, in a two months period of time, perhaps. They also brought out the new ATEM Mini Pro, uh, so you don't need OBS then, for example, anymore. You have multi-view, um, all these things. Um, but I think for what I'm doing here, the ATA Mini is perfect. Yeah, so if you own one and you are teaching as a high school teacher for college, for private lessons, it is a great thing to do. And the setup here is not very difficult. Well, okay, that's more or less what I wanted to talk about. If you like this video, thumbs up, subscribe, all, all the usual things. And if you have any questions, the comment section below is our common friend here. Have a great day. And let's go to the Fate to Black Now, which conveniently ends every live stream or live recording that you do with the ATEM Mini. Thanks for watching.